cloudy skies, but no rain. The lights are on. It's an on-time start for game two of this three-game series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Washington Nationals. And here's Josiah Gray, and he gets to see his former teammates for the first time, Franny. And look, it's going to be about controlling his emotions today. 2-2. Two -two. Turner, right center. Trey Turner's done it to the Nets. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Breaking ball, left field line, flirting with the wall, and it's gone. And Josiah Gray has now given up 11 home runs. And Taylor in the air right center. Three innings, three homers, and now Taylor goes deep for the fourth time this year. And it's going to be 7-3. to three. Josiah Gray has pitched lights out during the month of June. After a tough stretch of games in May that included Gray's worst career start against the Dodgers, he has completely turned around this past month. Gray currently holds the best ERA of any starter in the National League during the month of June at 1.13 after posting 17 straight scoreless innings, the most for a starting pitcher so far this season. He's increased his strikeouts, limited his walks, and has cut down on his home runs allowed. So what is he doing differently now than he was in May? Let's dive into the numbers and find out. The first thing that jumped out to me was his slugging percentage allowed month to month. In April and May, Gray allowed slugging percentages of 473 and 517 respectively. Meanwhile, in June, he has completely flipped this around and is only allowing a 221 slugging percentage. He's done so by reducing his home runs allowed to 0.75 home runs per 9 innings from a 2.87 home runs per 9 rate in May. He's also completely flipped his batted ball percentages. With only a 15% hard hit percentage, he has the best rate of any starting pitcher in June by far, with nearly a 3% gap between Gray and second place Joe Musgrove. In fact, Gray is within the top 25 for many different starting pitching statistics for June. Now, it hasn't been all perfect. He's still allowing hard contact off his fastball. His four-seamer has been hit pretty hard this season. The pitch currently sits at a plus six run value for 2022. The pitch itself certainly has life and movement. It's often the location of the fastball that becomes an issue. He's had trouble locating his fastball inside, especially to lefties. Luckily, he's got other pitches, including his slider. Gray's slider usage has increased to nearly 30% from 20% last season, and that number is increasing. And it's a good thing too, because the slider has a negative five run value, the best of any starting pitcher's pitch on the Nationals. And I'm going to show you the many different ways he's using his pitches by checking out his pitch sequencing. Josiah Gray is on the bump against his former organization, the Cincinnati Reds. He's gonna get Brandon Drury to ground to Luis Garcia, but he's gonna actually pull Josh Bell off the base. That's gonna be a runner on first. Next batter's Tommy Pham. He's gonna take Gray deep to center field. Victor Robles going back, he leaps. Oh no, Kevin Franzen was saying the same thing. That's really, really unfortunate. Robles definitely had that in his glove. It just happened to pop out, very unlucky. Now, Josiah, how do you respond to that? You got future Hall of Famer Joey Votto coming to the dish. Well, he's gonna show him first pitch fastball for a check swing strike. Second pitch fastball up and in ball. Then he's gonna introduce the change up just off the plate. Not a bad pitch, but Votto's gonna ID it. The two one's gonna be a curveball that's gonna make Joey Votto look a little bit silly. So Josiah Gray is gonna go right back to the well and get Votto swinging over the top of that one for the strikeout. Mike Mustak is leading off the second inning. He's gonna see first pitch fastball, ball one. Second pitch backs up on Josiah a little bit. Ball two. Josiah's gonna challenge him with the fastball here. He fouls it back. Then Josiah's gonna show him the back door slider for strike number two and instead of going back to that pitch he's actually going to drop the curveball and Mike Moustakas swings right over that and you can really see it on the Rangers broadcast later in this video that I'll show you but Josiah's two pitches it's kind of hard to tell on the broadcast but they do 
have different movement. Final sequence I'll show off from this game is against Tommy Pham, who took him deep to center field in the first inning. Josiah remembers what pitch he threw. It was a fastball, and he's not going to give him a single one in this at bat. Going to go first pitch, get me over slider called strike one. Second pitch, wicked slider. Get some swinging over the top of that one for strike two. Now he's going to show him the curveball. He doesn't want it to be this far outside, but he did want to show it to him because now he's going to go right back to the slider. And Tommy Pham's just seen the curveball, and this slider just does not drop as much as Pham thinks it's going to, and he's going to get rung up looking, and he knows it. Next outing I'll show is against Philly, and this is a perfect example of pitching well even when you don't have your best stuff. You can see in this at bat to Castellanos, he just really couldn't get his uh, breaking balls to break consistently. It was backing up on him a lot. His fastball was a little erratic, but he still managed to put up a scoreless start in this one. Skipping ahead to the six hole hitter, Alec Bohm. First pitch is a fastball, drifts too far inside. Second pitch is in there on the inner half. Third pitch is absolutely dotted on the outside corner for strike two. Now in the one two pitch, he's going to go down and away, and Bohm swings over it for strike three foul tip into the glove. But hold on a second. It looks like maybe K. Ruiz did not catch that ball, and Alec Bohm and the Phillies are going to throw a little temper tantrum. Uh, he's going to stomp around like a little five year old child. Um, but the umps will get together and actually get this call correct. Ruiz did not catch this ball. So Josiah Gray is like, all right, I guess I'll run back on the field. I'm going to throw one pitch, strike three, go sit down, get, a, get some Gatorade, get some seeds. Uh, but uh, yeah, get off my plate. We've got Nick Castellanos coming up with two outs. He's going to throw him three straight fastballs here and get the count to one and two. Now he's got him set up for the breaking ball. First one backs up a bit. Second one, he tries to overcorrect, but the third one is just right. 87 on the black, basically, for strike three. Sixth inning, he's going to get JT Real Muto grounding out off the end of the bat here for out number two. Just barely gets him. And now Josiah is approaching his highest pitch count of the season, but he's going to be allowed to face Odubel Herrera, who grinds in at bat, and Josiah gets him swinging on the curveball. Unfortunately, though, it's going to get by Ruiz and Herrera advances to first. Ben Gray is going to walk Alec Bohm. Honestly, throws a really good pitch here, but Bohm just spits on it. And now it's decision time. Is Davey going to come get his guy? He's at a career high 115 pitches. He says, no, Josiah, go get me that final out. And Josiah says, I got you, Skip. Pounds his chest because he knows that he is done and he got out of it even with his, without his best stuff. And that is going to be a successful scoreless outing for Josiah Gray. Moving on to the Texas Rangers, his final start of the month. Josiah really had it work in here, especially the breaking balls. And he was able to throw his slider and his curveball effectively to lefties especially. He was working the back door all game. And I'm going to show you a perfect example with this first at bat to Corey Seager. He actually kind of owned Corey Seager this entire game. And you'll see all three at bats. But he's going to start him off working that corner down and away. He did a good job all game of mixing the curveball and slider down and away, and they definitely have a different look. You can really see it on this broadcast. Finally, Josiah is going to get him here swinging at the backdoor curveball again. Laz Diaz calls him out from behind the plate, and he actually did go, so uh, good job, Laz. Second inning, he's actually going to run into a bit of trouble for once. He's going to walk Mitch Garver on five pitches. And then Nate Lowe is going to take him deep to center field, 432 off of his fastball. But Josiah is able to quickly shake this off. Start the third inning, he's going to get the catcher, Valoria. He's going to go first pitch, top of the zone, fastball for strike one. Second pitch gets the slider in there for strike two. Third pitch drops the curveball below the zone, gets a check swing. He's going to actually hold up on this one. But Josiah goes right back to it and gets the check swing for a strike. Welcome back, Corey Seager. We're going to get you on one pitch this time. Back to our slider right on the edge. Corey Seager swings over it and hits it right to the second baseman, Hernandez, for the out. Adolis Garcia came into this game absolutely scorching hot, but Josiah Gray doused the flames, including just an unfair front door slider here to Garcia for the swing and miss and the strikeout. Welcome back, Mr. Corey Seager. It's your third time facing Josiah Gray this game, and you know what happens. Third time around the order, managers start getting cold feet. They want to pull their starters. But no, Josiah Gray is going to confidently go at Corey Seager here. Even after going down 3-1, he's going to whip out the two nastiest sliders of the night. Gets Seager swinging over the top of both of them. And the, the second one is just absolutely wicked. Uh, they show the, the second angle here, and it's just... Look, look at how much this pitch moves across the zone. That is impossible to hit. 
how do you top getting Corey Seager out so easily three times in a row? You go out in the seventh inning and you punch out the side. Mitch Garver's gonna get welcome to grade A here. He gets fastball in the inner half for strike one, then a breaking ball in the inner half that he check swings. Then he's gonna get a curveball down and away that he lays off, but he's not gonna be able to lay off this nasty slider and that is the strikeout. Then Nate Lowe comes back up and Josiah actually falls behind three and oh to the guy that took him way deep to center field earlier in the game. And yet Josiah is gonna battle right back into this count. And then this is probably my favorite pitch of the entire game because Ruiz is gonna drop one sign. It's gonna be the curveball, and Josiah immediately agrees. He trusts his catcher, he trusts his stuff, he knows he can throw any pitch that he needs to, and he executes an absolutely wicked backdoor curveball for the strikeout. And the final batter that Gray is gonna face tonight, Tavares, is gonna see a curveball down that he swings over for strike one. Then Gray wastes one outside for ball one. He throws a perfectly placed slider for strike two on the black on the outside half. K. Bear Ruiz comes up firing and he should have the third out of the inning, but it, it is actually dropped by Garcia here. And Ruiz actually getting a bit fired up. He knows that that play's gotta be made. That's about the third one during this week of games, I feel like that happened. So he has a right to be upset here. But Josiah says, don't worry, dude, I will pick you up. He gets the strikeout. And Ruiz actually helps himself as well by throwing out the base runner. So Great outing for Josiah Gray. He was absolutely electric all night long. Get excited, Nats fans. This could be your future ace. So, how will Josiah Gray start July? Guess we'll find out tonight, because it's Gray Day. See you next time. Peace.